everyone has player rankings. Almost every site has player projections. Are you ready to go beyond that? Let me introduce you to DraftSharks.com 3D projections. Matt Schaff, Jared Smoll, and Alex Korf here. And Jared, the first dimension of these 3D projections is our award-winning player projections. So what do you put into those? Yeah, so these are our baseline projections. These are what we believe is most likely to happen for this player in the upcoming season. And for just for starters, projections are so crucial in fantasy football. It's a game based on numbers, right? We score based on catches and yards and touchdowns. If your rankings are not based on projections, if they're based on gut feel or whatever the hell else people are ranking that aren't projections, I just think you're, you're doing it wrong. So we spend a ton of time on our projections every off season. We start at the top level, team level stuff. How many plays is this team going to run? What's the run pass split going to look like? Um, then we you know start to break it down at the player level, quarterbacks. You know What's the completion rate going to be, the yards per attempt, the touchdown rate, that feels quarterback. Uh, projections, running backs, yards per carry, target share, catch rate, wide receivers, you know, yards per catch, catch rate, all this stuff is fueling these detailed player projections, which again, that's the baseline. That's the starting point for these 3D projections. And it's impersonal. It's it, <laughs> personal. And it's important to get that personal touch because you look at players who, you know, maybe had a disappointing touchdown rate last year. And then you look at what he's done in the past. You look at league averages. You just look at all the factors as opposed to simply looking at last year's and saying, man, I don't think it's going to happen quite like that. I'm going to add a little bit to it. So, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah. I mean, there's an art to it, right? It's not, it's not, there's not a right answer, but you know, we look at things like, you know, what the player's done in the past definitely matters, but league wide averages matter too. At some point, everyone kind of condenses around this mean. So if this wide receiver scored a touchdown on 20% of his catches last year, I don't, I don't care. I don't care if it was Jamar Chase. Like we're not going to project him to score on 20% of his touchdowns again. So again, that that's the type of little detail that goes into these player projections that I think makes a, makes a huge difference in the end. The second dimension of these 3D projections projections is the consensus projection from 38 other sites that we incorporate. That one's pretty self-explanatory. We we look at what other people are saying about them. We incorporate that a bit to give kind of a market baseline, you know, incorporate the market value into each player's valuation. Then number three here, Alex, is ceiling and floor projections because, you know, sometimes Jamar Chase is going to hit 20% touchdown rate. We want to build in the possibility that a player is going to go well above or well below what we project for him, right? Yeah, you have to have three if it's 3D. So that's where we have that ceiling and floor projection. Uh, Jared gets way into the weeds. He's not projecting one at a very touch to be a touchdown, but there is a likelihood of that happening. So he's projecting what is that likelihood of that ceiling or of that floor Uh, And that's what is going to impact your upside mode. If you're looking for maybe some upside during your weekly starts, that's where you can really look at that floor versus ceiling uh, part of your projection to see, hey, man, I have a tough looking matchup. I'm playing against Jamar Chase. Who do I need to flow into that flex spot? That's where these can really take off. Yeah, that's right. These three projections are not just for your draft. We do them in season as well. Yeah, we, we're projecting every player every week of the season. The baseline, his ceiling for that week, his floor for that week. And as Alex alluded to, that is important. You need to be factoring in that range of outcomes for players. Um, you, know, you probably don't want all these high risk, high reward guys in your sign lineup. You probably want some of them and you probably want more in there if you think you're the underdog in your matchup. So again, all that information is available to you on draftsharks.com and it's all customized to your league's scoring system, which is huge. And going back to that draft war room, that upside mode that Alex mentioned a minute ago, that automatically clicks on halfway through your draft. So those ceiling floor projections come into play along with the likelihood of hitting that ceiling. We want to clue you in on the players who have the highest ceilings if things happen to go their way. If things happen in a way that we can't really predict, we want to let you know who are those sleepers in the second half of your draft that could really catapult you to that championship. So if you are ready to put these 3D projections to work for you, click the link on your screen right now to become a DS Insider. 